we're in kind of the the sweet spot where if my neighbor loses his or her job, we're in a recession. And I think most Americans, and I, and I think most polls are telling you right now that the majority of Americans think that we are in recession, not heading for one. And I'm talking about mainstream polls, 52%, yeah. 56% of Americans think that we're in recession, but that's okay. As long as you're just talking about your neighbor. And, but that old adage is if your neighbor loses his or her job, you're in recession. If you lose your job, you're in a depression. And so we're not there yet. Job spreads aren't what jo job losses aren't widespread enough yet. The probability of a U.S. recession within the next 12 months has remained unchanged since the beginning of this year. But at 25 to 30 percent, it remains elevated relative to our baseline comparison since World War II. Danielle DiMartino Booth, CEO and chief strategist of QI Research, indicates that we're in a period where if a neighbor loses their job, it feels like a recession. She explains that if your neighbor loses their job, it's a recession. If you lose your job, it's a depression. The conference board's June Consumer Confidence Index dipped to 100.4 in June from a revised 101.3 in May, but the jobs picture held up. The conference board found 38.1% of consumers said jobs were plentiful, up from 37.0% in May, while 14.1% of consumers said jobs were hard to get, down from 14.3%. On the flip side, Danielle observes that many consumers are still hoping they'll be okay. She finds it interesting that while Americans' view of the broad economy and how businesses will perform in the coming year has collapsed, they still believe they might be personally okay, albeit at some risk. Furthermore, houses are getting more expensive by the month, although the pace of growth is slowing down. Nationwide home prices rose 6.3% over the year in April, according to the S&P Core Logic Case Schiller Home Price Index. Dow Jones Indices said Tuesday. That jump was less than the 6.5% increase in March, but enough to lift the index to a fresh all-time high. The Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes since 2022 have taken a big toll on the estimated $4.7 trillion pile of outstanding commercial real estate loans, 38% of which reside at U.S. banks, according to Moody's. Danielle points out that the housing price data is not yet problematic enough for the Fed. She believes that housing is weakening to the extent that, a year from now, we'll be discussing the risks of shelter disinflation and how significantly it could weigh on inflation. Before we jump into more content, consider subscribing and enabling notifications to stay updated with our latest uploads. I think you need to be really careful when you're looking at home price data. Uh, it, it usually reflects the world as it was three months ago and kind of where we were coming into the, the peak spring selling season a few months ago. And there were a lot of hopes and aspirations at the time. Sellers were a little bit more reasonable and realistic in their approach to pricing their homes. Um, since then, I would say it's a little bit of a different world. People in the world of residential real estate are, are surprised right now that they're seeing inventory build as rapidly as it is. So you're now, you've got kind of a running count in the background of the number of American cities where inventory is higher than it was in 2019. And that's going to become very problematic fairly quickly, which is why you had more of a reaction to the consumer confidence data than you did to the housing price data. The housing price data is not problematic enough for the Fed because we know that housing is weakening enough that a year from now, we're going to talk about the risks of shelter disinflation and how how heavy that could weigh on inflation coming down as quickly as it will be once we're starting to reflect falling home prices and that's that's where we're had it, headed given the rapidity with which we're seeing inventory build um the flip side of it is i think a lot of us consumers are hoping they're going to be okay it was it was interesting uh, Americans' view of the broad economy and about how businesses are going to be doing in the coming year have absolutely collapsed. But they're mm. still kind of saying, but for me, it's it's I, I think things might be a, a little bit at risk, but but still okay. And so we're in we're in kind of the the sweet spot where if my neighbor loses his or her job, we're in a recession.
And I think most Americans, and I, and I think most polls are telling you right now that the majority of Americans think that we are in recession, not heading for one. And I'm talking about mainstream polls. 52%, yeah. 56% of Americans think that we're in recession. But that's okay as long as you're just talking about your neighbor. Um, but that old adage is if your neighbor loses his or her job, you're in recession. If you lose your job, you're in a depression. And so we're not there yet. Job spreads aren't, what jo job losses aren't widespread enough yet, but we're getting there. And specifically because CEO, CFO confidence is not improving, it's just kind of stuck in a range. That means we're not quite finished cutting costs. So this next earnings season, we're going to see yet another round of layoffs coming out of corporate America. And I think that we might be at the point where this is starting to affect more than just your neighbor. Loosening the labor market has offset inflation pressures, and financial markets now anticipate one or more rate cuts this year, despite the Fed's hawkish stance. The Fed has a dual mandate to keep prices stable and maximize sustainable employment. It has spent much of the last two years hiking and then holding interest rates in order to bring U.S. inflation down toward its long-term target of 2%. The U.S. labor market is at a point where it could become a greater issue for the Federal Reserve going forward, a senior official at the central bank said Monday. Meanwhile, unemployment rose to 4% in May for the first time since January 2022. Danielle draws parallels to the period leading up to the 2008 financial crisis noting that if we see significant moves in the unemployment rate in the upcoming July and August employment reports, Powell may consider a rate cut in September. Let's now turn our attention to the video again. What we're seeing is, in a word, momentum. Yeah. And we're seeing layoff announcements arrive in months that are not typically... April shouldn't have had more layoffs announced than January. And yet that's what we saw in 2024. That was unusual on a seasonal basis. And when things begin to fall off their seasonal normal patterns, you always see joblessness rise in the summer. You know, Detroit shuts down its auto factories for a few weeks. And so you see a little bit of seasonality there and a little bit of weakness into July. These are all things that we expect, but it's, it's the broad nature of the layoffs that we're seeing. It's when a logistics firm in Humble, Texas, on, on, on a Thursday afternoon via text, they learned that their company that, that, that was owned by private equity is closing and you're not getting your paycheck on Friday. And it's only going to affect 2,000 employees. It's when things like that happen, which just happened, just your normal ebb and flow of, of the business cycle in any given year. I, I think that too many people on social media it's it's so much fun to to let's let's have a good solid hour of bashing. Let's bash the J the, the J Powell pinata because it's <laughs> so much fun. It's so much fun to liken him to his predecessors. Uh, you know, Janet Yellen was afraid of going up on the hill. She didn't want to talk to anybody in Congress. She didn't want to talk to anybody. Period. Ben Bernanke was also he was he was pretty shy. Yeah. And he wasn't politically shrewd. Uh, Alan Greenspan, different story. Uh, he he liked to talk to people on the hill, mainly presidents. Uh, <laughs> true, but he loved the limelight, and and it, yeah. and so so Jay Powell is the exact opposite of all of these people. Uh, you know, it's a matter of public record by law, but he has been to see more Congress people on both sides of the aisle than any of his predecessors. So he's been very active in speaking with people in Congress about what what are your constituents seeing, feeling? Um, and, and it's not to be political. It's actually to be the opposite of political. He was pointedly asked two press conferences ago, you know, if the data weaken materially enough such that there's a justification for going in September, it, will it stop you that that is the FOMC meeting that precedes the election? And it's rare that Jay Powell goes off script when he's up at that podium after the Fed meets, but you, a, kind of a dark cloud crossed his face and he said, every meeting is live. Every meeting is live. Politics won't change that. So he's, he's a different animal. And if we see, as we saw, kind of as 2007 turned into 2008, we'd seen little baby steps in the unemployment rate and it was inching up a tenth at a time, slow, 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 slow. And then boom, came early 2008 and you saw big moves in the unemployment rate. If that's where we are in the July and the August 
uh, employment reports, I could certainly see uh, him having that first rate cut arrive in September. A closely watched report on economic activity showed a drop in May, although not enough to warn that the U.S. faces a recession. The conference board's leading economic index, LEI, declined 0.5% last month, more than expected, and the third straight month of losses. Over the past six months, it fell by 2.0%. Economists polled by Dow Jones Newswires and The Wall Street Journal were anticipating a decline of 0.3% in May. Do you think the probability of a U.S. recession within the next 12 months is higher, lower, or the same as it was at the beginning of the year? We want to hear from you. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments, give a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and subscribe to stay connected with our ongoing exploration.